I must be in some kind of a parallel universe, because while everybody's raving about how awesome Kling AI is at generating videos, that's not at all what I'm experiencing. I set out to make this video about Kling AI with the intention of doing it together for the first time, you and me. Several hours in, I realized I was going to have to change course on that, because Kling was completely uncooperative. For starters, I go to klingai.com and I try to create my account. I put in my email address and pick a password, and I got this notification here that says I need to choose a popular email provider like Gmail or Yahoo. Well, excuse me for not being popular enough for you, Kling. So I get my account created with a Gmail account, and we should be off to the races. When you log in with your email address and password, you click the sign in button, you get one of these make sure you're not a robot task where you have to use a slider to drag a puzzle piece into the missing hole, and only after you do that will you find out whether the username and password you entered is correct. It would be nice if it saved you that hassle and told you that it didn't have your email address in the system before it made you play with the puzzle. I could chalk all that up to minor inconveniences and move on, as I did. So letting that go, I get logged into the amazing, incredible, mind-blowing Kling AI, the new king of video. I find myself on the home page where I have an option to create AI images using colors, which is something I already have on OpenArt, so nothing new there, and then AI videos powered by Kling. Awesome, that's what we want to do. And then video editor is a feature that isn't available yet. I'm going to click the big AI videos button right here in the top center of the screen, and I see we've got two options, text to video or image to video. Well, of course, I want to try both. So let's start with text to video. Got a prompt box, pretty straightforward. Clicking this little best practices deal takes you into their sort of guide for how to prompt. Nothing really earth shattering in there. It doesn't seem to require anything really specific. What they call hints down here at the bottom, I guess, are really just like starting points of some different things you could pick out of the sky and create videos about. If you hit the refresh button here to the right of that, you can get a whole new set of random words. Since I already have a text prompt ready, to, I just click in the prompt box and paste it in. Moving down, we have setting, which gives us a slider here between creativity and relevance. Usually when I'm experimenting with something like this is start with the default or in the dead center, and then to see what creativity and relevance really do, try it at the extremes, really close to creativity or really close to or at the max relevance. I stayed in the middle. Standard mode and professional mode boils down to standard is the fast and professional is the quality. But you can't use the professional mode unless you are a premium user, and I am not about to be a premium user at this point. You can choose a length of 5 seconds or 10 seconds, but you can't have 10 seconds unless you're on professional mode, and of course you can't have professional mode unless you're a premium user. Aspect ratio 16 by 9 seems great to me. They do offer 9 by 16 and square. Next is camera mode. Movement, and I thought that's pretty cool that you could have some control over that. If we hit the drop down, you can go horizontal, vertical, these other options. There are some more complex kinds of camera movement, which are only available if you are a premium user. If you pick one of these camera movement options, like horizontal, you get a slider here, and you can adjust which direction you want the thing to move, and you get a preview right above it that shows you what you're doing. I'm going to go ahead and reset that because I don't want to try and influence it. I wanted it to just do its thing. Negative prompt is optional, and it gives you some examples of things that might be included in a negative prompt, but if you click on the box and start to type, it's not as though you can copy and paste those options or select them. So leaving the negative prompt blank, I went and hit generate. And after a blistering seven minutes, I got this video, complete with morphing and hologramming people running under sidewalks, cars passing through each other, and all kinds of other problems that just don't make this useful at all, in my opinion. But all right, that was one attempt. Let's try something a little bit different. So then I switched over to image to video and provided it with an image and a prompt that was completely different than the time lapse thing that I tried. You can drag and drop your image in, you can click to upload, or you can select it from your Kling AI history if you've generated something using their AI image generator. I started with this image of a dog sitting on the back of the couch looking out at the rain. I pasted in this prompt, which is a chihuahua dog on the back of a sofa looking out a large window at the rain outside. Raindrops are dropping down the outside of the window outside 
is gloomy, cold, and wet, but the inside of the home is warm, dry, and cozy. I didn't fiddle with any other settings or the camera movement, and for a negative prompt, I did put in blur, disfigurement, low-quality, computer-generated. Because I really don't want any of those things going on in my generated video, I hit the Generate button, and I waited, and waited, and waited. After a few minutes, I decided to go ahead and let it get started on a second version of this, so I kept everything the same, the same starting image, the same prompt, everything identical, and hit generate again. My theory there was sometimes getting the right image or the right video out of these models isn't necessarily about making a whole bunch of major changes. Sometimes you just gotta roll the dice a couple of times, and you end up getting what you wanted in the first place. So I figured I'd let those two run, go do a few other things, and come back. We are now 20 to 0 hours since I hit the generate button on those, and they are still at 99% processing. The message says enjoy a coffee break while we finalize it. That would be a lot of daggone coffee. At some point it became obvious that my filming plan was going to have to change up a little bit, so I went ahead and entered in my third prompt, and this one involves providing both a first and last frame image. This is the image I want to start with. And this is where I want the video to end up. So I dragged the first image into this spot on the left, dragged the second image to this spot on the right, and the prompt, which it says is optional, I filled that in because there is something pretty specific that I want it to do. What I'm looking for here is a POV shot that starts in the woods and it kind of zips through the woods and then it flies through this drainage pipe tunnel sort of thing and then pops out with a view of this city from a grassy knoll. I left the settings all at their defaults. I beefed up my negative prompt a little bit to include illustration, cartoon, anime, and painting, just to make sure it understood that I want like a realistic photograph video here. I went ahead and hit generate on that, and then I redid it two more times so that we could end up with three versions of that video, and hopefully one of them would be good. So where are we at almost 20 hours later? Right here, 99% on all three of those generations. You might be thinking, well, it's just a glitch with your account, or maybe it's because you loaded in like five generations pretty much back to back. I too suspected that one of those things could be the cause of the problem. So I tried again to generate a single video from a different account in a different browser. And that one's still sitting at 99%, and that has been probably 16 hours at this point. After waiting about 12 hours, I tried again on a completely different computer, on a different account, and within about an hour, I was able to generate the dog looking out the window video. That's the one where I started with this image of the dog sitting on the back of the couch looking out the window. And here is what Kling AI gave me. I've got a dog on the back of the couch looking out the window, I'm not sure why there's like an upside down flagpole holder here, but that's minor. I can live with that. I say it did a pretty decent job. It got everything that I wanted. It doesn't have a bunch of morphing or weird things happening. The only thing that I did notice is that up here on this window, it looks like the rain must be inside the window because it is in front of the frame. It is fairly low resolution at 1280 by 720, but for free, I can live with that. Using the same computer, the same browser, and the same account where I finally got the dog video to generate, I tried again once that video was completely generated to generate the one of the POV shot starting out in the woods, going through the tunnel, and ending up in the city. On that computer, browser, and account, we are at three hours or so and counting, still waiting on that one to get past 99%. The computer, browser, and account that I first tried that video on is at 20 hours and counting, and it's still sitting at 99%. I had two theories on what might be causing this problem that I'd never heard of before. One is maybe it's something technical, like an issue with the server, the server's overwhelmed, or the wires that go between me and wherever in China the server is, maybe they got crossed and right now is just not a good time. My other thought was, well, I'm using it for free, so maybe the paid users get reasonable turnaround time, and the free users, since you're not paying anything for it, you're at the back of the line and we'll get to you when we get to you. Doing a quick internet search, I ended up on Reddit and found that this is neither a new problem nor anything related to being a free account. Numerous users were citing the same problems a month ago. There were also plenty of paid users saying they were experiencing the same thing, which seems to rule out the possibility that it's just a free user problem. So it doesn't seem like this issue is isolated to me. Many other users were expressing the same thing. Some said they experienced the generation get to 99%, sit there for a day or days, and then ultimately come up with an error that it couldn't generate. So that made me feel like there's no guarantee that this is ever going to actually finish. My dog video came out okay. My time-lapse video was just terrible. 
I'd love to experiment with it more and see if I get good results, but I'm not really interested in any kind of AI generator that I have to time with a calendar instead of a stopwatch. If Kling AI actually worked, meaning it generated the videos within some reasonable amount of time, they do have what seems like fair and multiple pricing options. At present, you get 66 free credits per day. It seems to take about 10 credits to generate the standard mode five second video, which is all you can create when you're on a free plan. Those 66 credits it's reset every day so you can't accumulate them and they have lots of pricing options for how you can purchase credit packs now i'm assuming that buying credit packs would not get you access to the things that require the premium account when it says you need to be premium to use the higher quality mode i assume that means you have to have one of the subscription plans and when it comes to subscription plans they do offer a lot of options they're broken down by yearly saver monthly saver and then one month the yearly saver you're paying for a year up front for the standard plan it's seven 29.20 per year, and that gets you 660 credits per month. Now, it does say below here, free credits daily by logging in, so I assume you're also going to get those 66 daily credits that you get as a free user. Otherwise, 660 credits per month is about 10 days worth of free credits. Of course, it also gives you the ability to remove watermarks, generate in professional mode, extend the video up to three minutes, which is pretty cool, and get access to those advanced camera controls. At $293 a year on the yearly saver, you get 3,000 credits per month. They estimate that 3,000 credits per month would get you about 15,000 images or 300 standard mode videos. The monthly saver is another interesting option they offer, which is basically where the first month is deeply discounted, $388 a month on the standard plan. But then it goes to $880 a month after that, and it says you can cancel any time. They also offer a one-month plan, which for standard is $10 a month, Pro is $37 a month. I feel like if you really only intend to use it for one month, probably the monthly saver would be the way to go. It's much, much cheaper, and it says you can cancel any time, so assumably after your first cheap month, you could go ahead and cancel that rascal. I wish I had better news and mind-blowing videos to share with you that came out of Kling AI. That just isn't the case for me. Maybe I'm cursed. I don't know. And I'm absolutely willing to try Kling AI again at some point in the future, maybe give it some time to work out these kinks and see what it can really do. As a free user, I don't really have beef with Kling AI being a new platform, having these problems that I'm experiencing. It is what it is. If I was paying for it, as some users have reported, and still experiencing these problems, that would be an issue. The bigger conflict in my head is that every time a new AI video generator comes out, there are a mob of videos telling you it is mind-blowing. It's the Sora killer. And I don't know why we're still using Sora as the benchmark when most of us don't even have access to Sora yet. I appreciate you hanging out with me for this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.